you don't want to film a video like this after three consecutive 12 hour shifts, but it's also the only time I'm going to get to film it. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Zena. I hope you're all well. I just finished my first on call during the coronavirus pandemic and it was not what I was expecting whatsoever. We've all seen these clips from Italy and China and Spain of overflowing hospitals, not enough beds, not enough uh, doctors around, nurses and staff, but it was nothing like that. It has been the quietest on call I have ever been on. It seems like the public are now taking the coronavirus seriously. Since the official lockdown in the UK, there seems to have been a shift in attitudes towards the coronavirus. So beforehand, people were very blasé about it, carrying on life as usual, a lot of people not worried about it at all, not taking it seriously. I get the impression that people are worried about coming into hospital because they don't want to catch the coronavirus. So the wards are very empty because we've discharged everyone that we can and no one is coming into A&E either. So very few people are coming into hospital. I think they're scared of catching coronavirus and so people are only coming in if they're very unwell. So I've just finished three days on call, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's the surgical on call. Usually by the end of the on call you have about 20 patients, it's about five or six sides of paper just with all the details of the patient so you can go around and be aware of everyone. Our list today, instead of being five or six sheets, it's one single side of A4. So a huge difference to what I was expecting. On Friday, actually, I was so free that I was recruited to help out on a different ward. One of the coronavirus wards, because a lot of the doctors there are isolating and their job is now taking much more time. The medical team, the doctors there, have to take all the blood because they're aware of all the precautions and they've taken all the training on how to take blood safely from a coronavirus patient. So I was recruited to help out on this ward. I was initially pretty anxious about working on this ward, as I think most people would be. It was my first time coming face to face with coronavirus. I was worried about the precautions and what I'd have to do, but actually it ended up being really interesting. I ended up having really good training on PPE, personal protective equipment, and how to protect yourself when dealing with coronavirus patients. And I got to learn about the precautions that people take when taking blood, for example, from a coronavirus patient. So it's not like a normal person where you take the blood and then you send it off to the lab in a pod. As soon as you take it, you put it in a specimen bag and then you have to double bag it. So you're in the area with the coronavirus patients and you're in PPE and you're assuming that you're contaminated and you get a colleague to stand outside the contaminated area in the clean area with a second bag and they very carefully open the second bag for you you drop in the potentially contaminated bag into their bag without touching their hands and they close it up and then in theory this second outer bag is free from coronavirus at least on the outside and then there's a second precaution so these clean bags are put in another bag which is very clearly marked that it might contain infected material. So that was really interesting. I got to deal hands-on with coronavirus patients. Because the samples are so sensitive, they have to be walked to the lab. You can't just send them in a chute. So that was a really interesting start to my own call. One thing that is massively appreciated is the huge amount of free food available at the moment. So the hospital canteen started giving free breakfast, free lunch, and free dinner to staff members. And throughout the day, you can go in and grab a cup of coffee for free. There's also a great charity called Meals for the NHS. And every day, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they donated a hundred dinners for the staff working in my hospital. And a hundred dinners is a lot of food. So on Friday, I was helping carry it from the delivery man into the hospital. And it was difficult, great charity overall. I'll have a link down below if you want to follow them on Instagram or donate to the charity. I really like how the charity works. So it solves two problems at once. Firstly, we have NHS staff that are having to work much longer hours over the next few months. And we also have restaurants that are being really hard hit because they're not able to open, they can only do delivery. They ask for donations from members of the public and this money goes towards food that the restaurants then send to the NHS. So it solves both these problems at once. It supports the NHS staff and it supports restaurants and the food is great. So then over the weekend, over the Saturday and the Sunday, I got to learn much more about how we deal with coronavirus patients 
how we diagnose them, the kind of problems they come in with, and also how it affects our practice in the whole of the hospital. There are so many patients now in the hospital with coronavirus that in a lot of situations you have to assume that someone has it. Wear the full protective gowns and wear the full protective equipment just in case. For example, I was called to a cardiac arrest for a patient without known or without even suspected coronavirus. But because of the nature of the situation, for example, he might have to be intubated, he might have to have chest compressions if he deteriorated really quickly. Because of those risk factors, everyone present there had to wear a mask, a gown, and gloves just in case. Also, as time goes on, we're learning some really interesting things about the virus that can help us pick it up where we might have missed it earlier. So as someone working in the surgical department, a lot of the patients we come in are coming in with abdominal pain. So their tummy hurts, the medical doctors or the A&E doctors don't know what's causing it, and that job is left to us. But a lot of these patients with stomach pain, but no other problems, so no cough, no fever, no loss of sense of smell or taste, none of the classical coronavirus symptoms, just stomach pain. So a lot of these patients are turning out to be coronavirus positive, the only symptom being abdominal pain. So that's something that we're going to have to monitor over the coming weeks to see if it's an important factor. We're also learning better how to pick it up from different investigations. So we have a swab, you can put a swab in someone's throat and nose, and if that comes back as showing coronavirus on it, then you know for certain that someone has it, but that doesn't pick up all the cases. So we're starting to find other indicators that can point to someone having coronavirus. And that way we can take the same precautions when we're dealing with them, even though we're not confirmed yet. We can take the same precautions to keep the staff safe and help us stop spreading it to other patients. So for example, there are very specific changes on CT scans that can point to coronavirus infection. For example, we had a patient who had a CT scan just to assess for any problems in the abdomen, but, but on the lung portion of the CT scan, we found a ground glass appearance on the periphery of the lung. And that's been shown to be a specific marker for coronavirus infection. There are also markers on the blood tests. There are also other things that we can now tell on the blood that point to someone having coronavirus infection. For example, when you have any kind of infection in your body, the immune cells, your white blood cells, can either be raised or low. And we now think that in coronavirus, a specific kind of white blood cell, the lymphocyte, is low. And that's been shown to be a really sensitive marker. And what that means is that if someone has a coronavirus infection, they most likely will have low lymphocytes, but other things can also cause low lymphocytes. So it doesn't mean they have it for certain, but again, it's one of these things that get you thinking about it so you can take all the appropriate precautions. And then the last thing that my team did today was perform an operation on someone with suspected coronavirus. And again, like going to someone with a cardiac arrest, you have to take really careful precautions when dealing with these kind of patients. So this operation is one that would usually be done laparoscopically, so through keyhole surgery. But we think that keyhole surgery is very high risk for spreading coronavirus to the team doing the operation. So a lot of operations that would have traditionally been done through keyhole are being done open. And that's something that I found interesting. So that was my on call with COVID. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what would you like to know about my life as a doctor and how it's been affected by the coronavirus crisis. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. I'll see you next time.